Our story starts in the year 1062, and Harald Hardrada, King of Norway, is fighting in a prolonged war against the King of Denmark, Sven Estridsson. The conflict between these two men stems from the former King of Denmark and Norway, Magnus the Good, granting upon his death the Kingdom of Denmark to Sven and Norway to Harald. Harald had been ruling alongside Magnus as joint king of both Denmark and Norway after Harald returned from his adventures in the service of the Eastern Roman Empire. And as Harald and Magnus were related, as Magnus's father, Olaf II, was Harald's half-brother. Before Harald's arrival, Magnus had been fighting against Sven whose own royal ties were linked to King Canute, who had created the North Sea Empire. But when Magnus was elected King of Norway in 1035, he fought to keep his throne from one of Canute's sons, half Canute, until an agreement was made that should one of them die, then the other would inherit the subsequent throne. Half Canute died in 1042, and Magnus was proclaimed King of Denmark, and to protect the peace, Magnus made Sven Earl of Denmark. But Sven soon laid claim to the Danish throne, as he was also related to Canute. He presented himself as a more experienced and battle-hardened ruler than Magnus. Yet Magnus assembled an army and quickly deposed Sven, defeating him in several battles. Sven was forced to flee to Sweden, where he began to build support but the situation of the conflict changed in 1045 when Harald returned to Scandinavia, loaded with gold and riches from his travels. Sven, realising the mutual benefit of working together, made an agreement with Harald, and the two then prepared a fleet to invade Denmark, starting at Zealand, looting and raiding along the way. By autumn, most Danes began submitting to Harald. Magnus responded by gathering a large army, but before the two armies could meet, Magnus's counsellors preached peace and reconciliation. Magnus relented, and messages were soon sent between the two parties. Magnus offered Harald joint kingship in return for half of Harald's wealth. While it was a tempting offer, as prolonged warfare would be costly, Harald was hesitant to break his agreement with Sven, until one evening, whilst drinking in each other's company, Harald and Sven got into an argument over Harald and Magnus's kinship. After returning to his ships, Harald told one of his servants that he was going to sleep somewhere else on the ship, rather than his own bed, as he felt ominous. But before doing so, Harald placed a wooden log in his bed and slept elsewhere. Later in the night, a loud crash woke Harald up and upon inspecting where the noise came from, he made his way to his bed, only to find an axe embedded in the log. Harold quickly raised the alarm and told his men that it was dangerous to stay. Harold then ordered his ships to row away quietly under the cover of night. Harold's ships then rapidly began rowing towards Magnus's location, and upon reaching their destination, Harold and Magnus soon made peace with one another. As the meeting was described, when royal kinsmen met, the reunion was a joyful one. Harald and Magnus then proclaimed that Norway would be ruled in a joint kingship between the two. Yet both men had their own courts, and Sven had scurried off somewhere in Denmark. Yet joint rule between two ambitious men would inevitably create tension. On October 1047, while on campaign in Denmark, Magnus fell ill, and while on his deathbed, bequeathed Norway to Harald and Denmark to Sven. Magnus's reasons for granting Sven Denmark can only be up to speculation, but whatever the case, Magnus had sowed the seeds for a future conflict. The news of the young king's death quickly spread, and Harald assembled an army in order to proclaim himself as the rightful king of Denmark, as he regarded himself as the rightful inheritor to Magnus. Yet most of Harald's army turned away and started to head back towards Norway. Harald, realising he needed to consolidate his power in Norway before returning for Denmark. 
Whilst Harald was returning to Norway, Sven was in the middle of making preparations to leave Denmark for Sweden, when two of his men approached him and informed him of King Magnus' death. Sven then proclaimed, I swear to God that I will never flee from Denmark again as long as I live. Sven then gathered what men he could and rode to Skane. Then over the winter months, he subjected any in Denmark who resisted his rule. When Harald realised that Sven had taken the crown of Denmark, he immediately launched raiding parties starting in Jutland and soon started plundering all of Denmark throughout the summer. And in response, Sven would do the same. This back and forth would continue for years as neither side could maintain any holdings for long. By the winter of 1061, Sven challenged Harald to one final decisive encounter. Harald, being the proud man he was, accepted. The two men then spent the rest of the winter building ships and recruiting men for the upcoming battle. The agreed location was at the Nyssa River, and as soon as the weather was clear, Harald set out with 300 ships at his command. And by the 9th of August, 1062, Harald arrived at the agreed location, where he waited for some time for Sven to show. Yet hours passed and there was no sign of Sven or his fleet. Harald probably thought that Sven was backpedalling on their agreement, and sent half of his fleet home, most of which were inexperienced farmers, and kept the rest of his men for raiding later on. Yet just a few hours later, Sven arrived with 300 ships. Now facing two to one odds, some of Harold's men shouted that they should flee. Harold then replied, sooner than flee, we shall all lie dead in heaps. Harold then ordered his men to tie their ships to his great dragon boat, which formed the center of his navy, and the rest remained close to the flanks with Harkon Everson commanding the flanks. Sven also ordered his ships to tie together in an attempt to push through Harold's line and split his navy in two, with himself and Finn Arneson stationed on the middle ship. With both sides now in formation, Harold blasted his battle horn and shouted to his men to row forward, and soon the two sides clashed. The fighting soon became heavy, with both kings roaring to their men to fight on. Harold started launching arrow after arrow from his bow, and the brutal clash of swords and shields went on for hours and late into the night. Harold being outnumbered was soon mitigated by the quality and experience of his men. But at some point late into the battle, Earl Harkon rode his longboats around the Danish ships on the flanks and soon started to pick them off one by one. And wherever the Danes applied maximum pressure, the Earl would manoeuvre his longboats to relieve the most in danger of being overwhelmed. The Earl kept up this tactic for the rest of the battle. With Earl Harkon's constant sorties and Harold's retinue pushing further into the Danish ranks, the Danes soon began to break off and retreat with some jumping into the water to escape. Yet many Danes escaped as the Norwegians were tied up or blocked by now 70 empty ships. As for King Sven, he either escaped by disguising himself or was released by Earl Harkon. Either way, Sven got away with a good portion of his men, and with the battle ending not as decisively as each side wanted, and with both countries suffering from the prolonged conflict, Harald in 1064, offered Sven a white peace. With peace now restored, Harald began to rule his kingdom as his namesake of Hard Ruler, until an exiled earl named Tostig Godwinson arrived on the shores of Norway, 
with an interesting proposal. Thank you.